Continuing our Star Citizen lore series on the Imperator candidates, we have Ileana Sherard. She is the current High Secretary in Law. Listen to this in law interview narrated by Zinya. And remember to vote for your favourite candidate by the 24th of October. Welcome to Showdown. I'm your host, Aria Quint. Today, we're taking a break from our normal debate format for a one on one interview with Imperator candidate and current High Secretary Ileana Sherard to discuss her role in the current Costigan administration and the direction she'd take the Empire if elected. Welcome back to Showdown, High Secretary. Good to see you again, Aria. How are you? I'm well. Glad you had time to join us today. Your schedule is incredibly busy as you juggle campaign appearances along with your daily responsibilities as High Secretary. How have you been managing to give both roles the time and attention they deserve? It's only possible because of the great team around me. They oversee the day-to-day operation of the campaign and work tirelessly to execute the goals and initiatives I set. It's funny. When Imperator Costigan asked me to be his High Secretary, he explained that a leader is only as good as the people they surround themselves with, and this is a philosophy that I have found to be true time and again. As High Secretary, I rely fully on employing the most qualified individuals at local, system and empire levels to be able to manage the vast infrastructure of the empire, as well as address the individual uniqueness that makes every system so special. That's the only way to achieve any truly meaningful change. It's also why one of the cornerstones of my campaign is building an administration that will ensure that our government is going to be working at every level from the top down. One of the core promises you've made is that, if elected, you would fast-track one pressing infrastructure need in each UEE system. Since the proposal I read only discusses it in broad terms, I'd like to drill down into the details. Great! I'd love to discuss my Jumpstart programme. Have you already determined what projects would get funded in each system? Not yet. My team has a list of proposed projects, but I want to consult with the Governor's Councils in each system to see which initiative will best serve the needs of the residents and to evaluate the most up-to-date information before making any final decisions. Would there be a proposed budget range for each system to ensure a fair distribution of funds? There have been concerns that systems would be fighting each other for credits. We have avoided setting a firm per-system budget for the Jumpstart programme, since doing that disadvantages certain areas of the Empire, I'd prefer that the programme focuses on the potential return on investment instead of the overall cost of each project. For example, building a new spaceport in, let's say, Azura would be considerably more expensive than repairing the current one, but if the new port can handle more traffic and better facilitate trade, then it would be more beneficial to the long-term health of the system's economy. So you're not concerned about the overall cost of this initiative? It will be a consideration, of course, but no arbitrary number will stop you from making the right decision for each system. These projects will create jobs, inject capital, and improve the lives of that system's residents. I'm certain the economic boost provided by these projects will eventually outweigh their initial cost. That's quite the promise. Eight years as High Secretary has taught me a lot about the Empire, specifically that good things happen when we invest in ourselves. Still, while most can't deny that fixing local problems is a good thing, critics have continually cited the cost. Nothing in your proposal or any of your campaign speeches has clearly defined how it will be funded. That's because Jumpstart doesn't exist in isolation. It's only one part of my vision for the future of the UEE, and made possible through savings in other areas. What areas, specifically? Well, as I'm sure you're aware, I would call for a freeze on Synthworld funding to review the project's progress and set attainable goals. Doing so, even for a brief period, would free up considerable capital to be reinvested elsewhere. Halting Synthworld funding would require approval from the Senate, who still seem quite committed to the project. Thankfully, I'm pretty good friends with the Senate. (laughs) Those that support Synthworld know that I'm not opposed to it. I just feel like the dream has slipped away from us. I'd like to pause and reassess it to see if its development is really something we can achieve. You've also been very vocal about introducing an initiative called Active Engagement. Would you consider using funds raised through that? Those gains will primarily go to strengthen the social safety net and promote greater overall engagement within the Empire. Let's just take a moment here, High Secretary, to explain active engagement, since a lot of our audience may not be overly familiar with the details. This programme would essentially require anyone, whether they're a citizen or civilian, to actively engage in an authorised civil service programme while taking advantage of certain benefit programmes. Many critics have cited this as a first step towards mandatory service for the populace. Well, I see the benefits of this as twofold. First, it ensures social programmes remain resilient and funded at a level proportional to their demand. Second, increasing civic engagement, much like improving infrastructure, benefits and strengthens the entire empire. It makes people feel like a part of something bigger and gives a stake in creating a better future for all. 
under this proposal, people could lose access to certain government programmes if they don't participate, correct? There are a lot of rumours out there about what this programme does and doesn't do. Let me make it clear that no one will lose access to the rights and services guaranteed to them in the common laws because of it. Essentially, those that need a little extra help will get it by giving a little back. For example, if someone needs help to afford a room in a housing exchange, they could volunteer at a local government-run food bank. The majority of people who rely on social programmes to survive are civilians and unable to vote for Imperator. What would you say to those civilians who may be worried about you implementing such a monumental change to their way of life? Change is often hard but necessary. I believe that under active engagement, the UEE will be able to keep these social programmes strong, even in times where we would have faced a budgetary shortfall. In addition, some of the options available can lead to an individual gaining citizenship, which will increase their contributions to the future of the UEE in a myriad of ways, including voting for Imperator. Turning our attention more specifically to that upcoming vote, why do you think Imperator Costigan hasn't endorsed your campaign? You'd have to ask him. I have great respect for Imperator Costigan and the tough situation he's facing with his son still in the race. Considering the circumstances, I believe him remaining neutral is the right call, though I would like to point out that the Universalist Party has officially endorsed me as a candidate in this election. There are reports circulating that you and the Imperator haven't spoken in weeks. As you mentioned at the very beginning, I've been incredibly busy, but my staff have been in constant communication with the Imperator's office. So his silence doesn't disappoint you? It's quite unusual for a sitting Imperator to not endorse their party's preferred candidate so late in the campaign. Look, I don't think this election will come down to one endorsement. This election will be about whose ideas and vision for the future of the Empire are the most inspiring. That's why I'm here discussing my vision with you today, and will continue to do so tirelessly with anyone willing to listen until the election ends on October the 24th. High Secretary Sherard and I have a lot more to discuss about her vision, but first we need to take a quick break. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for October 2020. It is for a Mercury Star Runner. This highly anticipated multi-role ship is going to be great for small to medium-sized crews that want to do uh, a bit of everything, whether that be cargo running, data running, missions, combat, smuggling, all that sort of jazz. And it's going to be in-game and flyable very soon. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during October, including this one. More details down below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows and I use it and maybe you should too. 